More and more people every year changing countries trying to achieve their major dream to live a happier life. And it doesn't really matter which country you're moving to, the US, United Kingdom, Norway, Italy or France. Major mistakes every person does when they're moving from one country to another. And especially if it's your first ever move. Let's talk about those mistakes in today's video and find the best way to get up of how to avoid making them. Hi guys, I'm Anna, a classic digital nomad who is making money online and currently I'm living between four countries. Italy, France, England and Norway. During my life I was living in seven different countries so far and my last two countries, Norway and France, were the easiest for me to relocate. In fact, it took me about a week to decide and move to Paris. Any question how I did it, please let me know in the comments down below or write me an email directly. I will be happy to share my experience and if you need a personal consultation or motivation how to change your current country and move to a country of your dream, you know exactly what to do, this is my email address. All my details will be also in the description to this video. Please reach out and I will help you to start that life of your dream in a country of your dream. And typical mistake number one, you do not learn this new foreign language well in advance. Sincerely hoping that you will pick it up so fast when you actually move to the country. Wrong. I know, there are some individuals out there who just love learning new languages and the whole process is so easy for them. They need to watch a couple of movies on that language, they need to spend a couple of weeks in a new country and they sound like the locals, they communicate with locals with no issues, they don't even have their accent. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm clearly not one of those people. As I told you, currently I'm living between England, Norway, France and Italy and if in England and in Norway I don't have any issues, I'm using my English there at all, people understand me super easy. When I'm coming to Italy and to France, my best, best way to brush up my local language skills is italki platform. Right before coming to the country, I'm usually doing a crush course of that language. For example, I'm taking five lessons, 90 minutes each of Italian or French. It helps me to refresh my grammar, to refresh my basic vocabulary and when I'm coming to Rome or to Paris, at least I can basically communicate with people around me and accomplish some basic tasks in local language. Italki platform will really help you with any language of your choice. They do have Norwegian there, they have all these varieties of Scandinavian languages. They, in fact, they have more than 150 languages presented on their website. No subscription, no commitment. The lesson starts from five bucks uh, per lesson. You can choose any of those. Again, my personal choice, French and Italian. Crash course, five lessons, and you really feel much better in the country communicating with the locals. Mistake number two, and usually people are not ready for the local climate. My advice, guys, first, research it. Second, always better to visit the country in this most interesting season. For example, in Italy, like in Rome, it's going to be August, where the temperature can reach 40 degrees Celsius outside during the daytime, sometimes even higher. And in Norway, talking about south, where I used to live close to Oslo, temperature winter time can be minus 20 degrees easier. But when we're talking about northern Norway, like Hammerfest, where the salaries are higher, because it's a very popular location among uh, oil and gas experts, the salaries are much higher there. So the temperature over there can be up to minus 40, I guess, degrees. And also clothes for those seasons, and especially in Norway or anywhere in Scandinavia, where you have quite cold winters and you're coming from southern country like Portugal or Spain. Guys, be prepared. Not to mention that there is no Decathlon or any similar shop for example, in Norway, everything you can get in Italy or in France or in Spain from Decathlon with really good prices, you cannot get things with the same prices in Norway. And still, as I already mentioned this in my previous videos, always 
check uh, the amount of alcohol and tobacco you can bring to your new country. It's vital, guys, for those of you who, who are smoking or drinking alcohol. It's really important to know the limits of those things you can legally bring to new country. For example, in Norway, it's about six liters of alcohol. Please check this website. I will also give you in the description to this video. Mistake number three, and many of us don't have enough safety net. And especially for you guys who are planning to move to Norway, don't forget that to open a bank account that can, might take you up to six months, depending on uh, which country you're coming from. Because of this money laundry policy and the bank will be checking all your financial activities before opening you a bank account. So think in advance. Maybe it's wise to have an alternative payment system as Revolut. And obviously get ready for unexpected costs, especially Especially within the first three six months it's gonna be definitely some household goods like kitchen stuff towels bed sheets pillows duvets if you're not bringing all of this from your own country you will have to buy the majority of them guys okay let's talk about mistake number four and people who these days moving to another country without having a side hustle or side income. I know I keep telling this all the time because having two YouTube channels allowed me to quit my official employment in England and also become a sort of digital nomad and live between different countries anywhere I want. Guys, everything starts with a side hazard which is turned into regular online income. After you secure this regular online income, every door every country will be open for you. Mistake number five, and guys, this is essential. As you can guess, learn from my own mistakes. Before you leave in your country, make sure you will visit the dentist, gynecologist, any other doctor you're familiar with in your country. My sincere advice to you, you better run a whole health check before you booking that one-way flight to the country of your dream. A few days ago, I had an issue in France. I urgently needed to see a gynecologist, nothing major, just normal check. I went to the clinic. Of course, I needed a doctor who would speak English or Russian because my French is not at that level when I can communicate my health issues freely so i was looking for i was lucky enough to find russian speaking gynecologist in paris but as you can guess it was a private clinic with private services so one appointment with checkup and ultrasound it was fantastic took me 15 minutes lovely conversation in my mo mother language which costed me about 200 euros yes 200 euros and thank god i have my insurance otherwise right from my pocket. If you're coming from the US, if you're coming from Britain now, guys, consider opening international insurance, which will definitely cover all at least basic medical procedures in the country of your dream. Mistake number six. No one realizes how lonely you will feel in a new country and especially for the first three to six months. So looking at all these gorgeous pictures, oh my god, that nature in Norway is so amazing and it will suit me so well. And of course I can FaceTime and Zoom my family and see them every weekend. Guys, it's not the same. And for people who are moving to another country to join their partners, that's gonna first three, six months will be the best ever check of your relationships. Try all these meetups, all these international events. Oh, as far as I know, there is a website called Internations. They're also doing lots of events and you can com communicate with people over there. This is my advice. It was when I moved to England. This is what I used to do when I finished my university, moved to another city and needed a little bit of people to socialize with. For people with social media, <laughs> Instagram, YouTube, it works totally different, guys. No matter that I just moved to France, um, sometimes I really, I have no time <laughs> to meet people. I have two YouTube channel. I opened my relocation agency. I'm speaking to my team. I'm speaking to my clients. I'm doing a lot of private consultations. And by the way, by the end of the year, I decided also to do some free consulting uh, on Tuesday and Thursdays. I have 
maybe like four hours a week, but they are available and uh, all my details in the description to this video. Guys, this is only for this year, so please don't get upset if you are not in the list. Anyway, I'm doing these services too, so I don't really feel lonely. And mistake number seven, you're giving up too soon. With my own experience of living in seven different countries, it happens every single time. First one to three months, you have this honeymoon with a new place. You're so happy, it's so different, it gives you so much emotions and you're just happy. You, you, you're getting familiar with these things, you're meeting new people, you're arranging your lifestyle, you're discovering this place so you don't really think much about being like, you feel like a tourist for that first time. From month number three, usually up to eight months or sometimes up to one year, when this tourist um, visitor situation fades, you start realizing I don't speak the local language or I speak it with an accent, I don't have friends, I don't know where to go if anything happens and you start missing home, you feel like you don't understand people around you and you also start seeing those um, little things about the country you could never see with eyes of a tourist or a visitor. So you're becoming local, for example, uh, your internet doesn't work or you need to contact local authorities in order to get some help or something. And something usually doesn't work properly, it takes you time, they don't understand you. And all this, all in all, and um, usually you start thinking, oh my god, it was, it was bad in my country, should, should I just go back? Because now everything seems so difficult. Guys, at that point, just remember, life is checking you, it's testing you. From my own experience, just carry on and keep pushing. Don't give up too soon. Don't give up too early. Stay for at least 12 months. And I want to finish this video with a little bit of bonus section to give you some advice what you should never say or even think when you're moving to a new country. First, stop saying at any occasion, but in my country, I've heard this so many times, especially in Norway, considering the prices of alcohol. Every single person who is coming, especially from outside Scandinavia, the first thing, oh my God, but in my country, alcohol is so much cheaper. Yes, we know. And that's why from Norway, we're going probably to your country to have our summer holidays because everything looks so cheap. Yes, Norwegians will never tell you, but this is what we think. Second, do not complain about your new country especially never complain about it to the locals. And no matter that, they will be complaining to you about it. You just politely nod or try to change the subject, but do not respond and about with your harsh opinion. My advice. Number three, and don't talk about politics or religion. If you're not 100% familiar with country's political situation and if you just came a few weeks ago, just avoid this discussion, just say something. What well, I'm usually saying that I'm not very familiar with this subject and uh, I cannot give you my opinion on it. Number four, and I already mentioned this before, do not stay in your native, like local community. Of course, most probably in a new country, you will have your best friends coming from your own countries, experts as you but still try as much as you can to be integrated in the local society with the locals. And number five, and once again, don't give up guys. Do not give up. Give yourself a chance. If you decided to move to a new country, if you actually made it, give yourself some time. Don't overreact. Sleep on it all the time. If it's building up, okay, sleep on it. Cool down. Remember, everything looks much easier in the morning. And another very important thing, believe in yourself. You can do it. If I could do it seven times, you can do it even better. So I wish you all the best with your further relocation. If you have any questions, you know what to do, drop me a comment down below or just reach me via email. I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much for being with me today in Rome. And I hope I'll see you in my next videos. Bye for now, guys. Bye.